before he had time to glance at them now they were young men very young with a busy air holding sheets of paper in their hands now compositors their shirts spotted with ink carefully carrying what were evidently fresh proofs occasionally a gentleman entered fashionably dressed some reporter bringing news forestier reappeared arm in arm with a tall thin man of thirty or forty dressed in a black coat with a white cravat a dark complexion and an insolent self-satisfied air forestier said to him adieu my dear sir and the other pressed his hand with au revoir my friend then he descended the stairs whistling his cane under his arm duroy asked his name that is jacques rival the celebrated writer and duelist he came to correct his proofs garin montel and he are the best witty and realistic writers we have in paris he earns thirty thousand francs a year for two articles a week as they went downstairs they met a stout little man with long hair who was ascending the stairs whistling forestier bowed low norbert de varenne said he the poet the author of les soleils morts a very expensive man every poem he gives us costs three hundred francs and the longest has not two hundred lines but let us go into the napolitain i am getting thirsty when they were seated at a table forestier ordered two glasses of beer he emptied his at a single draught while duroy sipped his beer slowly as if it were something rare and precious suddenly his companion asked why don't you try journalism duroy looked at him in surprise and said because i have never written anything bah we all have to make a beginning i could employ you myself by sending you to obtain information at first you would only get two hundred and fifty francs a month but your cab fare would be paid shall i speak to the manager if you will well then come and dine with me to-morrow i will only ask five or six to meet you the manager monsieur walter his wife with jacques rival and norbert de varenne whom you have just seen and also a friend of madame forestier will you come duroy hesitated blushing and perplexed finally he murmured i have no suitable clothes forestier was amazed you have no dress suit he cared that is indispensable in paris it is better to have no bed than no clothes then fumbling in his vest pocket he drew from it two louis placed them before his companion and said kindly you can repay me when it is convenient buy yourself what you need and pay an instalment on it and come and dine with us at half past seven at seventeen rue fontaine in confusion duroy picked up the money and stammered you are very kind i am much obliged be sure i shall not forget forestier interrupted him that's all right take another glass of beer waiter two more glasses when he had paid the score the journalist asked would you like a stroll for an hour certainly 
they turned toward the madeleine what shall we do asked forestier they say that in paris an idler can always find amusement but it is not true a turn in the bois is only enjoyable if you have a lady with you and that is a rare occurrence the cafe concert may divert my tailor and his wife but they do not interest me so what can we do nothing there ought to be a summer garden here open at night where a man could listen to good music while drinking beneath the trees it would be a pleasant lounging place you could walk in alleys bright with electric light and seat yourself where you pleased to hear the music it would be charming where would you like to go duroy did not know what to reply finally he said i have never been to the folie bergere i should like to go there his companion exclaimed the folie bergere very well they turned and walked toward the faubourg montmartre the brilliantly illuminated building loomed up before them forestier entered duroy stopped him we forgot to pass through the gate the other replied in a consequential tone i never pay and approached the box office have you a good box certainly monsieur forestier he took the ticket handed him pushed open the door and they were within the hall a cloud of tobacco smoke almost hid the stage and the opposite side of the theatre in the spacious foyer which led to the circular promenade brilliantly dressed women mingled with black-coated men forestier forced his way rapidly through the throng and accosted an usher box seventeen this way sir the friends were shown into a tiny box hung and carpeted in red with four chairs upholstered in the same colour they seated themselves to their right and left were similar boxes on the stage three men were performing on trapezes but duroy paid no heed to them his eyes finding more to interest them in the grand promenade forestier remarked upon the motley appearance of the throng but duroy did not listen to him a woman leaning her arms upon the edge of her loge was staring at him she was a tall voluptuous brunette her face whitened with enamel her black eyes pencilled and her lips painted with a movement of her head she summoned a friend who was passing a blonde with auburn hair likewise inclined to en bon point and said to her in a whisper intended to be heard there is a nice fellow forestier heard it and said to duroy with a smile you are lucky my dear boy my congratulations the ci-devant soldier blushed and mechanically fingered the two pieces of gold in his pocket the curtain fell the orchestra played a valse and duroy said shall we walk around the gallery if you like soon they were carried along in the current of promenaders duroy drank in with delight the air vitiated as it was by tobacco and cheap perfume but forestier perspired panted and coughed <laughs> let us go into the garden he said turning to the left 
they entered a kind of covered garden in which two large fountains were playing under the yews men and women sat at tables drinking another glass of beer asked forestier gladly they took their seats and watched the promenaders occasionally a woman would stop and ask with a coarse smile what have you to offer sir forestier's invariable answer was a glass of water from the fountain and the woman would mutter go along and walk away at last the brunette reappeared arm in arm with the blonde they made a handsome couple the former smiled on perceiving du roi and taking a chair she calmly seated herself in front of him and said in a clear voice waiter two glasses in astonishment forestier exclaimed you are not at all bashful she replied your friend has bewitched me he is such a fine fellow i believe he has turned my head du roi said nothing the waiter brought the beer which the women swallowed rapidly then they rose and the brunette nodding her head and tapping du roi's arm with her fan said to him thank you my dear however you are not very talkative as they disappeared forestier laughed and said <laughs> tell me old man did you know that you had a charm for the weaker sex you must be careful without replying du roi smiled his friend asked shall you remain any longer i am going i have had enough georges murmured yes i will stay a little longer it is not late forestier arose very well then good-bye until to-morrow do not forget seventeen rue fontaine at seven thirty i shall not forget thank you the two friends shook hands and the journalist left du roi to his own devices forestier once out of sight du roi felt free and again he joyously touched the gold pieces in his pocket then rising he mingled with the crowd he soon discovered the blonde and the brunette he went towards them but when near them dared not address them the brunette called out to him have you found your tongue he stammered soons too bashful to say another word a pause ensued during which the brunette took his arm and together they left the hall end of section one recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey